I come on. I work on a preliminary estimate for them to clean out the ditch and get their pipes set. Which I come up with about twenty-five hundred dollars, and this is not does not include the cost of the pipes. And I told them what the cost of the pipes would be for them, so they can figure out what they want to go in where. That was the installation of the pipes? Yeah, we could install them. That would be installed, but that does not include the price of the pipe. Which would be an estimate how much? A 40 foot pipe of the size of thing is about $1,000. As long as metal prices don't go up anymore. <laughs> because they got a well, They got a 180 foot pipe in front of the station. And Well, I, I mean, it gives them something to work off of. Did you contact them and told them that? I'm, they're going to meet tomorrow night, I believe, or tonight. And I told uh, Fred Seifert that I was going to call the day with what I thought. All right, I think that maybe something. It must have been maybe a help of the problem for sure. So this is all on the south side? Because they were talking about something about deep and cleaning out the ditches on the north side of town. Yeah, this is on the south side, okay. just on the north side, side of the street, side. right by yeah. the elevator. Where this is plugged up through there. Yeah. Well, they've got a, a squash pipe to the west of it, and then they come down, they, they pinch this thing down to 20 inch pipe. And the intersection right east of there is a 24 inch pipe. Then you go to 24 by 36 inch squash down on the east of there. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of a mess, to tell you the truth. Are you guys up to speed on that? All right. Thank you. Oh, we did get the new loader in last week. Good. All right, thank you. Okay. Anybody have anything else right now? A couple things. First off, the mitigation plan. Uh, I misspoke last time we talked about it. I thought it was further along than it was. When I finally got a hold of the gentleman in charge, uh, we're about 38% complete. The reason is uh, he had no contact information to get oh, really? anybody. So they went ahead and did a couple things, a couple items on their own. Um, but now that we're back on track, so to speak, we're moving ahead. I talked to him on the phone, and he also had been emailing back and forth on, on items that need to be completed. The next big one is the next couple uh, public hearing meetings. Mm -hmm. establish that. And getting with uh, the proper people. So they did receive their check, their $700 check. They initially did not think they received that, but they checked back in the register. So we're good to go on that. They do have copies of all of that. And then we sent the thing that we had to, all to sign and everything. What was it? Uh, there was a questionnaire that had to be filled out. A couple of months ago, when we first said, where, where are we at with this? All right. So I have to get with Doris on a couple items that they were requesting, which I was not aware of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get all that squared away with them. Basically, right now, it's it's the ball's in their court as far as getting things set up. They're having to send out flyers, uh, postcards, to get everybody aware. Mm -hmm. I have to go around to get with everybody also involved, the school, school board, superintendent, Dr. King. Now this is 
the state agency or is this people that are the people that are in charge doing, and they're doing they're getting the grant money. They're the ones in Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's how they speak. Uh, they actually took a couple of initiatives on their own to get the ball rolling, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. even though they had no contacts on their end. Right. So they've got to take care of. It. Okay. So we're back in progress on that. Should be hopefully not running any major problems on that. The last um, meeting on the South Central Region of the Homeland Security Commission, and the last minutes on that. Since I was not here, I didn't have a whole lot of input on where that grant money would possibly go. Right now, I am actively pushing for at least the generator so the county can have a generator. The swing of it is I'm going to push for it for law enforcement to the sheriff's side. Mm -hmm. Because they have to give a certain amount, 20% of each of those grants have to go towards law enforcement per FEMA. So I will push forward for the, uh, the sheriff getting the generator and it also comes with a trailer, so it's a portable generator, it's a 40 kilowatt. Also the portable light system that comes with it. I just received notice that <clears throat> initially we were trying to do it as the, the counties that have not received generators prior or those only wishing to have this generator. But apparently for this date that won't fly, so we're having to rethink that option as far as who gets the generator. But I do believe we should be able to get one. A portable one. Portable, portable we got one portable. in place down here right now. This one's portable on a DOT approved trailer with extension lights, pole lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which right now, I, I believe it came to $30,000 per generator. <clears throat> as you can see, it's right now they have, I'm sorry, 30 kilowatts in there. They have $380,000 earmarked for that for all 19 counties. Which, do the numbers, it won't add up. So, <clears throat> they're, they're tweaking that. I have another. The next meeting is December 11th. The other issue is the ID badge system. They're trying to go to a complete unified badge system. To identify who's there on the side, make sure they're. Right. That's another security issue. However, not everyone has. We have a badge system. Mm -hmm. All the counties pretty much have their own badge system, but as far as the barcode systems, they won't talk to each other. So they're coming up, trying to come up with a new plan on how to get everyone's system either set up so they talk to each other as far as the barcodes go, or have a couple unified uh, badge systems that they'll send out to different counties and everybody can make their own. We're still going to make our own. The county, so everyone's identified but in the county, so we might see so, uh, the security badge and the county badge. So, still working on that one. Then it's not really specifically lined out in here, but they're talking about <clears throat> Homeland Security wants to go to a P25 digital frequency system. Extremely expensive, very expensive. I, I think that's going to probably get shot down because not all counties can afford to go digital. The only way they're going to be able to do that is if the federal government, the state, ends up purchasing digital programs and digital radio signals. Uh, I just, on a whim, <coughs> we're going to see how much a portable radio digital costs. It's about two thousand dollars per week. portable radio. So I think that's going to be. Uh, an initial beginning is probably going to be a, if you can afford it, get it, but it's probably going to boil down to grant money is the only way the county is going to be able to afford that. It's extremely expensive. So, um, <coughs> that goes down there, if you look under additional new business, it's the National Mutual Aid Frequency Standards. Uh, 
I have all those. A lot of those are UHF, VHF, uh, low band, which we can already handle those. But they're talking about the digital frequencies. Uh, very, very expensive. We're not going to be able to do it unless we get some, some grant money. So I guess some work to do. Yes, a lot of work to do, and right now they're just talking about interoperability, and the digital frequencies will be completely interoperability. Also with the EOC system because it is a satellite issue, it's a satellite digital signal, which means it can be used at any time, any place. Once again, very expensive. So. <clears throat> Uh, I think, personally, if we had to do something on our own, we'd probably be better off getting a satellite phone, a satellite phone, and bounce the signal that way. That we can still talk to anybody who has a tower that way without spending $100,000 just on digital equipment. So that's a, a next year project. I'm sure this won't be resolved anytime in the near future, the next meeting up to December. Something to be close to being resolved, and I would say probably there's probably only four counties right now that can afford to go digital. I'm going to. Unless the government wants to be generous and start throwing cash around again. <laughs> so these 19 counties, this is the regional, South Central, uh, okay, region three, region three. Okay. Yeah, because I was looking at bomb disposal safety equipment. I was wondering. Where. That is earmarked pretty much for. Hutch in Wichita. So. <clears throat> There's money out there. We only received, Region 3 only received 1.7, I'm sorry, $1.488 million of the total grant money allowed. And that's how we're trying to break it down. The IMT trailer is the trailer I kind of talked to you before, the smaller the mobile radio trailers, they're, trying, they're talking about putting one in Great Bend. So they want to contract with the moon company, which is the $50,000, to be able to move that trailer. So hopefully we'll have that trailer lined up in the next year. Okay. Now, I was working on the, uh, I talked to you before about early notification for severe weather, um, reverse hauling. There is uh, Belleville, Illinois, to started this program. At the beginning of the year, they put it into effect. They're working, it's apparently working pretty good. I spoke to Reach emergency notification system. It's right in front of me. <laughs> I laid it out. This is actually what they completely sent me as far as their terms, their notice to bidders, etc. If they wanted to take a look at it or not. It's a reversed cell phone calling system. rather in, in depth as far as capability. This is one option we might want to look at as far as early notification. There are grants available for these type of issues, whether it's this one. I also received another proposal from another company. Uh, those are pretty much radio-based. Kind of like your 
bedside radio. Mm -hmm. It actually is a radio. Mm -hmm. a bedside radio that also has early warning notifications for severe weather. Uh, I think that one's going to be a lot more pricey. Uh, that also would be either individuals buy the radio or we have to buy the radio to get them out. This one actually works with the cell phone system. And once the system is established and in place, the assistants can come in and sign up for it, give their phone numbers, and group calls everyone. be something we would probably look into also is who has radios, what's our capability now, would it be simpler and more uh, feasible dollar-wise to go ahead with the other system since the already have the county has the radio system and put that in place. The reason I kind of like this is all the farmers or anyone's out in the fields or whatever I mean, we're right has their radio. cell phones on and we all know that tornadoes aren't on time. You never know when they're going to hit. So this way, everyone is notified, no matter where they're at. They might be in Lawrence. <coughs> the phone will go off, and they can contact their family or whoever's back in town and say there's something coming. Get some shelter. So this is kind of like similar to what uh, Channel 12 was doing to send out weather to all their subscribers. Right. Every morning, or what if there's a storm or something? And, but I think I I didn't call, but I presume there's a fee that they, that they subscribe to to get their personal weather information. So with the weather service. Do these calls, or would the, the call come in to here? It would come into the 911 or wherever the system's at, and then it's then and then, then it's typed in and basically a alphanumeric yeah to the phones and sent out in the batch phone call. Okay. So everyone receives it at the same time. <laughs> and we would basically get the information from the NOAA system, the mm -hmm. weather, mm -hmm. weather system. Or if there would be a, a winter watch type thing as well, because this is tornado sweat and severe thunderstorm. Major it's any major snowstorm. Any, my understanding it's any any severe weather related weather. event okay. that the National Weather Service wants to put on ice storms. Mm -hmm. They would come to us and we could put it out in a batch in, or a batch phone call. On cell phones you're saying, right? On cell phones. Or home phones. Oh, my understanding is also home phones. Okay. Whatever phone number you put in there. Some people still will have cell phones. Right. Whatever phone number you put in there, I think there, there's available there two numbers per person. Yeah, okay. Um, it'll send out a, a message. So three. Phones. Three phones? No fee for up to three, three contact numbers. numbers per address. Okay. So you can have two cell phones and your own phone. Yes. They said, I'd like to get hold of Belleville and see how the system's really truly run. Right now, they said it's running fairly good. But uh, let's see if there's any bugs. That's just bugs. Oh, there's always bugs. <laughs> but they're kind of in the same situation we are small rural communities that do, that do have bad weather. So that was obviously the most affordable method of notification. Okay. 
I have a meeting on Wednesday with another, uh, well, basically the same person that sold us the previous ambulance. We have one ambulance, Maxwell ambulance, is being sent over today for a break issue. We've solved some of the problems, uh, as far as the lights out, et cetera, by ourselves. The, I was sending TJ over this morning with the backup ambulance we have now, and the pulley was blown off of it and the belt. So, like I said, we have a problem with the brakes, this, the brake issue and the power steering issue. So let's check the power steering fluid, see if it's a vacuum line drove, et cetera. We open the hood, and that's a problem. We pull the pulley apart. So hopefully we can fix that ourselves. But I have that meeting with a, a gentleman, Daryl, about a new ambulance for next year. I've talked to the worst about the hospital ownership. So I just have to propose my ambulance purchase to them. Hopefully, we'll get it all through the ambulance for the hospital board. Because right now we're down three ambulance, to three ambulances, no backup right now in Maxville. It's apparently having a big issue. Still working. <clears throat> is, it, is Maxville the ambulance we've always had trouble with? Was that the one that wouldn't start? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I switched those out uh, two weeks ago. So I took the backup ambulance that was the better lower mile ambulance and swapped it and put it out in Maxville. The one that just blew the pulley was the old Max. Uh, their, their issue was uh, they had a problem with the, the lights, the brake lights, etc. We had a bad connection to repair that mm -hmm. in house. <coughs> and the ABS light system came on, the warning light system. Uh, it's now off. I had to bring the ambulance out here so I can look at myself. The brakes are very spongy. It still stops, but mm -hmm. it's not as good as it should be. So it might be a bad booster, it might be the air lines. Looked at this Hopefully that will take the problem. <clears throat> now where's the one that had Baxter Springs on it that we got from That's Baxter the one Springs. now is a backup here. That used to be a maximum. So that, that was the one that was parked over at Jerry's for a long oh, time. Oh that the old old one. <laughs> <laughs> I call it the old old one because it's not in service at all anymore. Okay. It's not here also. It's fixed, it's brought back, it's right here by the station. And your plans for that is to sell it or whatever? Uh, the plans when the gentleman comes out on Wednesday to get a bid for trading money for that ambulance and the old Maxwell ambulance, which is now at the station. Give it a couple of them. See what kind of money we can get as far as trading value. Usually get more trading value than what would be a uh, sealed bid. So, and all of the ambulances are diesel? So the one we had with, from Baxter Springs still has Baxter Springs on the painted on the side, or has it been? No, that changed? was all changed. It That's was you changed. Said Baxter Springs. I was not aware of yeah, what I was talking about. No, that one actually. Because it says, sat over here for a long time. That one says Maxwell Unit Number Four on it. Um, the one you're talking about that was sitting over at Jerry's for so long. Mm -hmm. I, bring, I brought that back three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Got the light issue fixed on them, or when they propped the lights or something? Because they said there were well, the issue with the lights it was the lens oh, couldn't right. pass okay. the state inspection with the lens broken. The big issue was Altmere battery issue, and that was apparently fixed, but it still has a draw somewhere. You have to jump in it; it sits for very long. So there's a lighting issue. So we have four units. Right now we have four units available. So I in, in in three units in frontline service, one unit in backup service, which can yeah. easily when the ambulance goes down, switch it over to about a half hour. However, that unit that was easily switched over to is now out of service. That's the one that the belt and pull. Okay. And that's one of the ambulances I'm trading.
I did uh, go get the computer from her. A uh, well, laptop that we purchased for one of the students that went to the school who is not on our service, still in the school. I did go retrieve the computer from that. So I have that one possession now. So you're going to pay back for us again? That I have not talked to her about. So we will type up a new letter without the computer issue on it. On that note, with this computer, uh, with our Spanish-speaking population, I believe it would be beneficial for us to go through Rosetta Stone and purchase a, it's a Spanish Latin American, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's a level one, two, and three. It is a thousand dollars. How would you put it on, and that's one reason why I got this laptop, we can put it on that laptop so it's portable. So anyone can use it at any time. Um, it comes with a headset and everything we have for that. Um, we have the headset with the computer also. So if we wanted to go that route, anyone who wanted to learn Spanish can learn it at their own pace. It's supposed to be pretty foolproof. It's, it's pretty, pretty foolproof. Yes, I said. I asked them how long basically one level takes. Level one, two, and three. They said if you do 20 minutes a day you'll have each level done in four months. So within a year's time, you're fluent in Spanish. Reading, writing, and conversing. So that might be beneficial when it be that. The reason I wanted to put it on a laptop is so this board. Mm -hmm. The way they said it, they have a license agreement. So each each computer you put it on has to have a separate license agreement. Well if I put it on a laptop. You carried around? Carry yeah. Around. Good so if you wanted to, there you go, you take it to your house mm -hmm. or this building, the courthouse or whatever, so it's more important. So that's a, an option we might want to look at. I did also contact uh, Homeland Security. There is a safer grant out there. However, it's over for this year. It'll be out probably information uh, probably early spring uh, I'm sorry late spring early summer the application process will go into effect the safer grant what that does is allows money to hire and retain personnel I believe right now the way our county is set up with this system and the population density, they take population density, response times, all that into effect. Right now, we can probably hire four, four people off of this grant. Full time? Full time. And it's also, it's set up for uh, basically for the fire side, but it's it's combination. You need a combination. Um, it's four people up to five years, with a fifth year being more of a contribution from the county. But it will, it will pay for up to four people with our setup working right now. 100%. 100%. Change. Well, that solves the problem. It solves the problem. It certainly will. The way it's also set up is uh, what we get into, the way we can get into it is it's a combination. We have a combination of partners. We have some paid personnel, mostly on paid volunteer. So we can actually apply for both. They have a full time staff and they have a combination of volunteer staffing. We can apply for both. Uh, the volunteer side is, as far as bringing them on, and also retention and training. That's how they classify it. Uh, depending on which side we go into, there's a little couple of stipulations on what we have. So we couldn't use this for EMTs. Absolutely. Can or cannot? You can. <clears throat> because we are a combination department. If we were strictly an ambulance service mm -hmm. and not having the emergency services with the buyer, we could not. We'd have to come through medical grant 
through the state. This is Homeland Security, a FEMA issue, and since we are a combination department, fire and EMS. So what's the chance of getting the grant? I believe the chances are this one. Really good. Yeah. Now, I could print off the numbers that some of the departments have received to hire personnel. Some have received sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Some departments have received up to two million dollars to hire anywhere between four and nine personnel. That included taking in consideration benefits and everything. I mean, that's to hire somebody completely. Really benefits and benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, it's yourself a problem. Yeah, right. We're getting places, it's hard to keep the volunteer personnel like in place. Right. It's a staffing problem. You have some assured these staff all the time. Then. Right, and that's one thing I, I plan on looking at, actually, on my agenda here, is to look into staffing this ambulance here at St. John 24 7. Also, changing, not really changing the dispatch. If Maxville or Stafford had a 911 call, St. John's unit would automatically respond. So we know that there's a fully staffed ambulance responding. And also, you draw from volunteers, though, too. Then. You, you draw from volunteers. Right. So you volunteers be assured that having something there, not have to grab right. the volunteers uh, here would also staff the backup ambulance. So the issue came up well, you'd be alienating some of the volunteers. They would be coming in and backing up the backup ambulance. So we'd always have an ambulance mm -hmm. staffed and ready to go. Um, we've run into the last month issues with Stafford ambulance not being staffed all the time. So St. John's ambulance has to respond to those. So, uh, day before yesterday, we had a call in Stafford that Max had to go to because St. John unit was at Pratt. And I actually went, went to the hospital, uh, Stafford's hospital, and waited for the ambulance call. They got the right call. There was a pregnant girl. Her water broke to a lot of different Deliver a baby, but she didn't deliver when we took her back. So, uh, that's some issues I'm going to try to resolve. So I'm going to look at the numbers as far as yearly pay mm -hmm. and what would break down two hours and one to 24 hour shifts. Um, you do a 24 hour shift, the full time personnel usually only work nine to 10 days a month. So to them, it's appealing because they get a lot of time off. They end up working more hours. That's when the FLSA comes in. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's definitely going to be beneficial for the county to have at least one fully staffed 911 ambulance. Now, hopefully in June or July, we'll have at least two paramedics for the grand So we'll be able to bring those on. Those paramedics. Also, I'm looking, on, looking about putting on the third paramedic for the 911 truck if the numbers play out right. So we always have a paramedic on that ambulance. I'll be responding on anything that's bad also, but there's always we're always assured a paramedic on that truck. Mm -hmm. That affects building as long as you have a paramedic. Any evidence, is that right? What's right, I have to talk to the state because it might change our status from a level two to a level one. Because right now we're just a level two ENTI BLS basic truck. So if we have a full time ALS unit, it will change our status, which will affect it. But I'm looking at the numbers on that one. See how feasible it really is. I, I've kind of already talked to the staff about it. They're all gone all about it. <clears throat> I, I advised them that it might have looked like